next news. Let's plow through the rest of this because okay. we're late already. All right. Uh, game publishers won't support libraries reserving games. Um, uh, the game de developer article is the main article, okay. and then there's a quote from the other article I put in that I want to pull. Okay. Uh, when we're, uh, when we're done. Uh, so we'll do the game developer article first. Original story. The Entertainment Software Association continues to not have a hand in any efforts towards games preservation. The new statement from the organization came in a hearing held by the United States Library of Congress Copyright Office to evaluate a proposed copyright exemption for remote access to archive games uh, for video game researchers. This exemption was proposed by the Software Preservation Network in 2023. During the hearing, lawyer Stephen England was asked about the possibility of allowing libraries to preserve legacy games. In response, he, uh, he said there is currently no combination of limitations ESA members would support to provide remote access. In 2023, the Video Game History Foundation evaluated uh, revealed 87% of games released pre-2010 were currently not preserved in any capacity. Attempts previously made by the Library of Congress were halted by the ESA, which said it relied on publishers to take care of those efforts themselves. During the call, multiple solutions to address the ESA's concerns over remote academic access to older games were proposed, but all were shot down by England. He, uh, he was not satisfied with either proposals he was not satisfied with either proposals to restrict access to those with academic credentials, implying many institutions would set up a simple rubber stamping checks to allow wide access, and derided the idea that limiting the exemption to collections with physical offices would be a satisfactory requirement. On the latter topic, he said that any online-based library could set up a physical office to meet that standard and allow for the creation of what is effectively a free-to-play arcade hosting a huge library of classic game titles. To him, the worst thing a nonprofit organization or anywhere with an online archive would be to put a preserved game with few restrictions online. That kind of remote access would be insufficient progress when it comes to preservation. AACS attorney Mike Ayers uh, spoke up in support of the ESA's arguments. In his eyes, there should be more substance in combating the already restrictive preservation rules. Uh, anybody can have a mailing address at Ayers. Uh, when it comes to just checking boxes as opposed to having anything verified, I would have concerns. It's not clear physical premises would actually be effective. During the hearing, other speakers were animate that something needs to be done about games preservation and that both England and Ayers were missing the point. Video Game History Foundation Library Director Phil Salvador argued most libraries lack the manpower, expertise, or interest to make meaningful game collections, either physical or digital. Institutions making the active effort to do this are in the single-digit numbers, he speculated. Only specialized institutions and collections could really make use of the exemption for remote digital access. Technology lawyer Kendra Albert argued that the ESA has been unwilling to meet researchers and preservation is halfway on these efforts. Any changes made to any changes made or proposed, they said, will never be enough for the rights holders of these games. Likewise, they called it upsetting to say scholars' efforts were undermined by the idea of people caring about these games. In Albert's eyes, that remark underlines how deeply out of touch both England and Ayers are about games as a medium. Harming scholarship and teaching because there might be an interest in recreational play doesn't feel fair to them, which put a lot of effort into making these, work avail making these works available. The hearing was live streamed by the Copyright Office and was archived by the Australian Twitch streamer uh, Scott Percival. It will be made available on the U.S. copyright websites in a few weeks' time. So, basically... There was a proposal put into place that... Uh, there were multiple proposals put into place. And the ESA, which is the lobbying group for the for yeah. all games, mm -hmm. has been pushing against it. They 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 specifically said there is no common... Uh, what was the exact quote? Because uh, it's like really fucking... There's no combination of limitations ESA members would support to provide remote access. Basically... Anything and everything that they proposed, the ESA said no to. Every single thing. 
no matter they, what they restrictions said, they put in place. They said they would allow something about physical libraries. Even but, that, well, like they were not. Yeah, they they they're, that seemed like they were not truthful about that. Like, yeah, like, yeah because here's here's the here's the quote I wanted to pull from the other article um cuz that proposal according to England doesn't prevent users from lying or providing a, or libraries providing a simple checkbox where users could confirm they have a purpose of scholarship or research so basically he's afraid that people are going to libraries for fun and not so, to learn so like that's the dumbest well, fucking the, thing one of the proposals was for uh academics to have access to the stuff right and he's saying that like well people could just lie and say they're going for academic reasons but right. really they're just going to play a video game having fun playing video games what a concept they're gonna push back as much as humanly possible yeah and uh that's why our government to step in and put regulations in place for archival purposes yeah you know uh uh there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to uh, have physical libraries that have games. Uh, that that's, yeah. that should be uh, supported by these big game companies. They should absolutely. Just, they should even want if that. it's old stuff. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be the Especially latest. Especially if stuff. it's old stuff. Nintendo yeah. is not making a dime right now on Eternal Darkness or Metroid Prime yeah. Two or like a whole list of other GameCube games. If my library wants to have it there and I want to take it out of the library because I haven't owned a GameCube, I should be allowed to do that. But I'm not allowed to do that because the ESA says I'm not allowed to do that. Yeah, that's very stupid. It's because they think I'm going to take the game out and play it for fun, which is somehow a crime. <laughs> like, what do you think people do at library? Not everybody who goes to the library is going there for academic reasons. People take out books to read recreationally. People take out movies to watch recreationally. Well, every My local library has video games that you can take out and play recreationally. But everybody knows that libraries are ruining the the entertainment business for movies and CDs and stuff. Clearly, <laughs> clearly they're doing that. Real every every director out there hates libraries. Well, actually, it's wokeness that's killing the entertainment industry. You know that, right? It's all the woke. Oh no, specifically the video game industry. Yeah. It's wokeness. Oh yes. Yeah. Making all of our women in games ugly. Yeah. <laughs> putting stellar putting stellar blade in a less revealing outfit yeah yeah making them ugly <laughs> uh, uh this is just I, I i'm just baffled by like 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 uh, it, it's it's i understand their concern with remote access because there's potential to just have games free on a platform but that hasn't been a problem with movies it has not I haven't a, heard a single complaint about that. It has not been a problem with movies. It has not been a problem with books. Libraries have been around since books were created. And, you know, people still buy books. Books yeah. are still readily available. You know, it, it, it's just... There, I, there's, a, there, there, there's, there's a general consensus that books make you smart. Yes. So having a book for free in a library is smart. Well, there's a lot but of... But video games make you dumb. Right. So having those available... Uh, is bad of course yeah. yes it's it's just it's unbelievable how like short-sighted and like out of touch they are like i've never seen anything like it's, this they're trying to i know what get as much money as possible do. and they're trying to i know what they're trying to do but like they have to know they look bad doing this well they're getting away with it is I, the yeah they're getting they're away get, with it there's nobody Especially here in America, there's nobody being like, hey, you have so much more control than any other uh, company in, in entertainment media. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Because, you know, as much as we love the Video Game History Foundation, they're, they're just, you know, a group of dudes. That's it. Yeah, like, I, but I don't. What's the solution? I, I'm. I've been thinking about this for for a long time. Like, yeah. like, what do we do? There's nothing we could do. There, re like, there really isn't. Like, somebody has to step forward, and like, one of these big companies has to step forward and say, "This is our answer to this." The closest thing we have right now is Gog. 
Like, that's it. The closest thing we have is Apple allowing <laughs> emulators on a platform. That's true, too. That was yeah. the biggest thing to happen in years. Yeah. But in terms Steam of. Steam has been on our side for a long time, but then with Dolphin, they betrayed us. Right. So. But it's not just like game emulation, it's like keeping games available, like yeah. easily accessible. Archive.org is great. And I think yeah. that uh, uh, the Video Game History Foundation, I think, might work with them. In they some do. Capacity. But like. You know, that's still... But that's what they're saying when they're saying remote access. Like, ESA is actively trying to fight against archive.org. Right, and, and they have fought against archive.org in the past. Because that still, you know, falls under the purview of we could, you know, hit you with a DMCA. Yeah. So, there has to be protections in place for that. Yeah. It's unfortunate that everybody that has any sort of power to make any rules in this country yeah. is 90 years old. Right. And they don't know what a computer is. Yeah. So only gets worse from here it does